it's opening morning and pretty slow morning so far in this basin I'm used to seeing between like 8 and 15 bucks in here and I've seen three a couple of them look pretty decent yesterday on the way in on another basin behind us we got into some really really nice bucks so we'll look to see if these deer bed in a spot that's conducive for a stock if not we'll pull out and then drop down and glass this other basin behind us and see if we can relocate some of those deer from yesterday had a great trip in though yesterday with the llamas no problems at all um, so it's smooth sailing there and we have about 10 days to hunt so i've got a lot of anticipation here hopefully things go as, as planned as hoped Uh, two does bouncing down kind of toward us from across the basin there. Didn't see them before. It just kind of goes to show you, you really have to glass thoroughly and then re-glass and then re-glass again because there's so many little tucks and folds in here that can hide deer. I don't know what they're alerted by, but I'm sure it's nothing. Yeah. So when I first start passing these basins here, I'll do a quick cursory scan and kind of pick out what I feel like are the most obvious, most likely spots that deer are going to be. And I'll breeze over all that. And then I'll use a more systematic approach going through and, and uh, you know, glass and kind of like a typewriter, left to right, then down, and then back across, and and uh, try and cover the basin really thoroughly that way. And if you, you know, you want to stop each time that you get to a new picture there and really kind of look all through your field of view there without moving your binoculars because you can pick up movement a lot easier when you're not moving your binoculars. Oh, and there's three more up above them. Little dinkers. So now there's seven bucks right out in front of us right here. Five across over there, so that's twelve. So we're up to our normal deer count. Just a disproportionate number of small bucks. Yeah, this is this is probably my favorite basin right here. And a large part of that is just because of how conducive the topography is in here to getting close to the stick bow. Um, you know, there are maybe basins around in here that hold more deer, but this has got a great combination of, of you know, pretty good deer numbers and excellent topography, a lot of rim rock putting the bed up against, and uh, just a lot of little dips and swales that you can use for stalking cover. So this is a great spot here for hunting with the stick bow. So the basin we were glassing first thing this morning uh, we got in some good deer in it, but none of them were going to bed in a spot that was conducive for a stock. So we've moved about maybe half a mile or so, and we're glassing the basin that we came around on the hike in yesterday, where we saw some really nice bucks. And it's getting late. It's already 9.30 but we're hoping that we can pick some of the deer up. It's still shadowed from the sun coming up behind there. Uh, so that'll buy us maybe a little more time and, and we're in a good perspective to pick them up out of their beds if they're already bedded.
our big buck basin was a bust. There was a backpacker camp down in the middle of it. I glassed it for probably 45 minutes and couldn't find any of the big bucks we saw yesterday on the hike in. <laughs> and then saw a blue and yellow tent down there in the bottom. It's gone now, so hopefully in the morning these deer will be back in. But meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and hike to the back side of this ridge here and see if we can't turn something up on the back side. I shot a buck in there last year and hopefully there's something back in there again this year. Now we've been getting rained on for the last couple hours here in varying degrees of intensity. We went ahead and rimmed around. We're on the back side of the ridge where we saw those really nice bucks yesterday on the hike in. And we picked up one of them on this back side here. So that backpacker um, spooked them out of the basin on the other side and they came up into this one. Uh, we're just gonna kind of wait and see what this rain does here and what the deer do because they're down in the bottom of the basement kind of the bottom of this bowl and there's not really much of an approach so we're just going to kind of hunker down hopefully this stuff will lift and give us a little bit of a break and those deer will move into a better position here that we can make a move on them when i was younger i didn't have really you know the knowledge from experience on stalking bucks and successfully getting within range of them and there's always the question of you know do you go or do you stay and watch and hope they get in a better position and I've kind of learned to recognize <clears throat> over the years you know when when is the time to go and when's the time to wait and so it's an interesting mix of being learning to be more patient and at the same time being more aggressive so when that time does come then there's little doubt in my mind I know what I need to do and I you know I get after it and um, you know before I I think I moved slower when I didn't need to instead of you know trying to cover as much ground as fast as I can um, during the time when I'm out of view of the deer and uh, and then slow down to that snail's pace you know when you get in that critical zone um, so it's kind of a you know interesting mix of of learning to be patient and learning to be aggressive at the same you know at different times but um, i think that's one of the bigger things lessons that i've learned between you know now and 30 years ago when i first started hunting mule deer uh, it's Tuesday, day four, and we finally got a break. It appears as though the hiking and backpacker traffic is mostly restricted to the weekend or weekends. We had uh, Saturday and Sunday, this basin got blown out, and today the bucks are back in here. We let it rest yesterday on Monday, and there's now 15 deer over on the hillside across from me. I got the glare of the morning sun on my spotting scope, so I can't tell how many of them are bucks, but I would suspect that most of them are bucks, and there's a couple of thumpers in there. So we're gonna wait, see where they bed, hopefully, some of them bed in a conducive spot for a stock and then I'll uh, give the old heave ho and hopefully make something happen.
stinking coyote, man. Spoiled the party before I even got there. I can't believe it. It was all coming together too. I had gotten, I had like a 15 foot vertical drop off. I had to go over, so I had to wait till the wind blew and then uh, I could get through some dead vegetation. And once I was through that, the hard part of the stock was done. And then uh, Mr. Yodi jacked it all up. So, well, maybe there's something bigger in store for me tomorrow. That's all I can hope. It's quite a almost shocking transition coming from civilization and the grind of your job and you know pressures and whether it's self-induced or you know deadlines or whatever um, you know coming back coming out here and just unplugging and and knowing you have 10 days to to uh, you know to hunt and the whole world just kind of seems to slow down which is it's a nice relief nice transition um you know without these times i don't know i think you'd burn out and fizzle out with the, with this recovery and and uh you know time to just sit down and reflect and and just sit down and soak in without you know having to be somewhere or having to do something it's definitely a recharge. I mean, there's, it's kind of a dual thing. Um, for one, I mean, this, this is what my family eats year round is uh, wild game. We don't really buy much of any red meat. So it was like, I, I uh, messaged my wife today and told her I blew a 18 yard opportunity on a nice mule deer. And she's like, that was our burger and our meat sticks. And she gives me the mad face emoji. <laughs> so it's, you know, it is a big part of what our family, what sustains our family. It's not just, you know, about getting out here and having fun and trying to shoot a deer. It, it does make a difference for us in our grocery bill and it's, uh, you know, healthy eating. Um, and then also from just from a business standpoint, you know, up here trying to, you get a, a video outfit together and, and it, of course it works out much better if you get something. So there's that as well. Um, but I try not to get too wound up about it, you know. Um, I've had, I've been up here and experienced lots of failures and then success in the end. And, and I've, uh, I've been up here and exper experienced failures and then eaten a tag at the end. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I think uh, having a positive attitude and really not, try not to let the pressure get to you, uh, it works out better than if you, you know get too wound up and trying to get your tag filled because um you know then if you get bummed out or disappointed or discouraged then uh, that's usually when the wheels fall off and and then you end up eating a tag so at least that's what the way it works for me mm -hmm. you ever get nervous something might happen to you out here no um i i haven't worried about it too much um, or don't worry about it too much. I mean, there are some times, uh, you know, now and again, where I'll get in a sticky spot in a cliff and, and I'll remind myself I have a wife and kids at home and, and uh, extended family and I need to make sure that I'm, you know, totally present when I'm negotiating some of these more treacherous stretches and, and um, I think that's probably the biggest danger out here. I mean, you know, yeah, there's bears, yeah, there's mountain lions, but I mean, that doesn't even cross my mind. Um, you know, lightning can happen, but I think the, you know, a, a stumble when you're not paying attention is much more likely to injure you than, than anything else. 
you know, I don't, I don't know how many millions of acres of public lands we have across the United States. And um, I think a lot of people are envious of guys that have permission to hunt private land, um, you know, a private ranch or whatever, but there's some absolutely spectacular hunting on public lands and the feeling of fulfillment that you get when you're hunting on land that anybody else with ambition and two legs, you know, can get up in here and do the same thing. It's a, really a, a feeling of satisfaction and gratification that I think is unmatched um, versus, you know, if you're paying to hunt on a private place or, you know, have access to hunt on a private place, I just, I get a lot of pleasure out of, of being up here working hard, working harder than most guys or a lot of guys. I mean, increasingly there's lots and lots of guys that are putting in the same or more effort than I am that are getting up here and experiencing the same thing. But <clears throat> if you think about what is there, say 310 million people in the United States, how few people actually get up here and experience and use these public lands. It's, it's a shame that, that um, they're not utilized more. Of course, I, I appreciate that they're not used more when I'm in here, but um, you know, it's so few people walk these ridges and canyons and mountain peaks. And it's a shame that more people don't get to see the spectacular things that we get to see as backpack hunters up here. Yeah, I think everything, I think everything when you have to work for it is more meaningful. And, you know, you could draw, you could shoot a buck out here road hunting, you could hunt the lower country and not put in as much effort um, from a physical standpoint anyway. And, you know, and be successful or you could get up here and spill a lot of sweat get just getting here and then even more you know nav navigating these ridges and peaks and climbing these mountains and all that and i think that adds a lot for me um it's almost disappointing to me the times that i've filled my tag on opening day because i feel like i haven't worked hard enough for it and i mean just getting in here that right there is a you know a fairly high bar that that you set um you know as far as from a physical exertion standpoint and so no matter if you fill your tag on opening day or the last day you have put in you know effort but when you go multiple days up here and you're getting up at you know 4 30 in the morning and and climbing these ridges and getting up there at first light and freezing until the sun hits you um, and then dropping down in the canyons and running the ridges and glassing and glassing and glassing and and rolling back into camp late it um it really makes it, you appreciate when you are successful um, it really makes you appreciate it that much more all right, here we go again. Tim's got two groups of bucks spotted in the basin. Um, one's got three bucks in there that, that are all the way at the head of the basin and then further down on the side hill in some jack pines, there's a plan B group. The uh, plan A group are bedded right below some rim rock. In fact, I stalked them earlier this week in that same location. And uh, there's some nice shooter bucks in there. Um, the weather, the weather forecast says 20% chance of rain today, uh, which pretty much means 100% chance up here. Um, I, I don't feel like lugging my pack all the way back over, around there again, so I'm just going to go fast and light, leave my pack here, and pray that I don't get blasted by rain before I can get this thing done. And, uh, and hopefully, man, seven days up here now, hopefully we can get this wrapped up here.
<laughs> Man, holy cow. That worked out so stinking awesome. I was up on top of that rock for so long, went all the way around the left side trying to get a shot angle and I could see when that little buck, the smaller one on the left got up, I saw one fork come up above the rim rock there and then I angled back around. I wanted to get a shot at the middle one or the end one. I knew those were the two bigger bucks and, uh, and I couldn't get enough angle to get around on there. So I had to come back up and around and I got to where, almost to where I was gonna be able to take a few more steps and get a shot at the one, the far one, um, in his bed and then he came walking out but the problem was is there was a spruce uh, a little spruce tree directly in between he and I and the panic in me wanted to shoot right through the spruce into the vitals because I, I mean I knew he was right up against it but I was like no man just keep your composure keep your composure so I just leaned back like this and he is eating on a willow bush facing dead away from me and then I just need him to take one more step and I was gonna have a shot. And then he turns his head directly up the hill towards me and he starts eating on that little spruce. And I'm six yards from this buck and I'm just like shrinking back further and further behind the, the roll of the grass there, hoping that he doesn't pick me up. Cause it's like, man, if I can just keep it together here and he takes one more step, turns his head away, this is done deal. Six yard shot. I knew it was gonna have a good opening there in the vitals. He fed on that that spruce for probably a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, something like, seemed like an hour. It was insane. And then finally steps out and turns his head and I just lean, lean up, come back to full draw here. And just as I'm settling in, he starts to turn his head and it was like too late, man. The shot went off and I just punched him right there. High here, exited low. I got like six inches of penetration in the dirt beyond him and then blew down the hill. I'm actually surprised he went a little ways. And the, the further he went, the, the more I started thinking, did I just really see what I thought I saw? But then I saw him, you know, spin around that bush and flop over and it was like, all right. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a ton of bricks has been lifted off my shoulders. So we're back at camp now. Tim carried the packs back. So we're going to get a couple llamas, go back there, do the retrieval, get him all loaded up, come back to camp, tear down camp in the morning and uh, head for the nearest ice cream parlor. <laughs> Here he is. This is the same buck that I think it was the second day I was throwing rocks <laughs> at from 18 yards to try to get him to stand up. And uh, beautiful four by, actually he's a four by four, technically. I mean, yes he is. He's a four by four, though this one's really weak on this side. But uh, beautiful buck, really long back tines. Man, I can't. I've been watching this buck on and off all week and uh, several times have almost got additional stalks at him. Um, but uh, to get it to pay off here on day seven, man, I tell you what, <laughs> it's nice to get the pressure off, I'm not gonna lie. This is an incredible deer. I got a very patient and supportive wife at home juggling three little kids and uh, I'm eternally grateful for her being supportive of me coming out here. I've been in the mountains, oh, let's see, the month of August for almost, almost three weeks now, the month of August, and home for three days between trips. So 
it's uh, it takes quite a toll on the family and and I'm, I'm very grateful and it doesn't go unnoticed on my part this is a wonderful deer and now we're going to get a bunch of really good meat off of him that'll keep us going for through the winter here so got some work to do so now it is time to get to the chores Thank you.